Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 125 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn all about knives and knife collecting. It's our midweek supplemental episode of the podcast where, as you know, we talk about knife life news, some of the new product drops and knife news happening in the world. Also, a chance for us to uh, just kind of chit-chat, banter about a little bit about uh, some stuff happening in the knife world. Get a chance to uh, talk about Bob's state of the collection and about a uh, knife that he reconnected with. On a recent little family trip he uh, he had, also uh, we'll kind of uh, uh, talk about uh, Knives Illustrated a little bit, about another article that uh, involves the Knife Junkie. But uh, we're going to start off our show with uh, some thanks uh, as well as uh, hearing some comments and uh, calls. We've got a listener line call, um, or two calls, and then uh, an email. We're going to hear one of those calls, and uh, Bob's going to read the email in his uh, lovely, melodious voice. So we'll hear what that uh, caller had to say. But first, Bob, we'll start with thanks. Thanks to uh, some new Patreon patrons in our Patreon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we just set up a Patreon page recently, uh, I guess within the last two weeks. And we got our first three patrons just in the last, uh, well, a- as of this recording, the last 24 hours or so. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Where Is Chris at $5 a month, Kevin at $5 a month, and Brent Smith at $10 a month. Uh, that is the gentleman junkie level. The $5 uh, level is the tactical junkie level. And then we have a traditional level at $3 a month. And uh, it's uh, I- I'm very honored. Thank you very much. Very, very, very much appreciated. And uh, Brent, uh, I wanted to mention that you are now in- entered into the monthly giveaway uh, for the first knife giveaway. And that drawing will be Thursday, July 16th on Thursday Night Knives. So uh, be there or be square, as they used to say. Yeah, and that's uh, kind of the way we're going to do it. The uh, third Thursday of every month, that's going to be the knife giveaway for patrons in the $10 a month level. You're going to have a, a chance to win a knife every month as long as you're uh, still in that $10 level. And we'll do that uh, drawing live on Thursday Night Knives on the third Thursday. Uh, and this coming first drawing, as Bob said, is Thursday, July 16th. That'll be the first uh, knife drawing. So can't wait for that. And Go ahead and get your uh, your your ten dollar memberships in now, so that you can uh, yes. maybe have some better odds. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, I hate to point out the obvious, but uh, Brent Smith uh, stands to win a knife every month. He's the only ten dollar. <laughs> uh, he's the only one there. So, right. uh, Brent, your your odds are looking good right now, sir. Right. But thank you to where is Chris, Kevin, and Brent. Absolutely, and I do want to uh, point out that. We do record these podcasts a few days in advance of when they air. So if you're thinking, uh, hey, I joined the the Patreon this past weekend. Why am I not uh, hearing anything? Or I, I joined on Monday or Tuesday. Well, that's the reason why we record on uh, Sundays, the supplemental episode. And so we'll be glad to uh, shout you out here on the podcast if you join at the $5 or $10 a month levels. The $3 a month level, you certainly have our heartfelt thanks, and we appreciate that. But uh, got to be some differentiation in the levels like there is with the $10 that you get the uh, monthly knife drawing. Yeah, and also uh, everyone uh, everyone gets a sticker. So I will be reaching out to you all uh, for ways to get the stickers out to you. Well, speaking of uh, listeners uh, and being involved with the Knife Junkies uh, podcast and YouTube shows and that kind of thing, couple of uh, listener line calls and emails that we wanted to go over. First, uh, uh, we just want to kind of uh, address a, a comment that you got from uh, listener Bill. Yeah, he, we just got a call in this week uh, from Bill, and it's uh, a common thing I've been hearing. Well, I've heard it uh, three or four times, maybe, where people are listening to the podcast on YouTube and uh, and these fantastic interviews uh, get interrupted. <laughs> get interrupted by commercials and and ads and uh you can click out of those in five seconds uh, 
you know, I, I would apologize, but it's not me putting those ads in there. You know, it's uh, YouTube. And when you get to a certain uh, level, they just start putting ads in there. So I do apologize. Uh, if, if you need another way to listen to the show that is less uh, interrupted, you know, you could for free get, uh, get an, a podcast app and just kind of catch it there. As well as listen on the website. As well as listen on the website. Yeah. Any of the uh, podcast episodes, like, for instance, this episode today is episode 125. So just keep that episode number in mind and go to thenifejunkie.com slash 125 for this episode or thenifejunkie.com slash, you know, whatever the episode number is. And that'll take you right to a page that has the uh, the interview right there uninterrupted as well as uh, show notes. Sometimes we have pictures, other things that we add to the to the page with the interview. So a couple of uh, alternatives there for you to be able to listen. And I know I, I like listening to, um, you know, podcasts and other things on YouTube. Even though it's a video platform, I still like listening to audio on YouTube because I can just, you know, with my new dual monitor setup in my office, <laughs> yes, I had, yes. had to brag about my dual office setup here at home. Um, you know, I can have the, the YouTube on one monitor and minimize it and just have something playing. I agree. Yep. The, the ads are annoying. I yep. haven't yet, you know, gone for the YouTube red or what, whatever they call it, where you can, you know, have ad free uh, listening or playing right. or whatever. But uh, yeah. So anyway, enough about that. Sorry, Bill. Keep tuning in. You can yeah. check it out in other ways and they're all free. So yeah, we do appreciate it, Bill. Glad you're listening. Um, another um, actually call on the listener line. And if you want to give us your feedback and your thoughts and call us on the listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. Corey Murphy uh, gave us a call, Bob. We're going to listen to that uh, right now. Hey, guys, this is Corey Murphy. I was listening to episode 115. I'm a little behind, obviously. I heard you guys talking about slingshots. Uh a mentor in knife making and a good friend of mine, uh, love him like a brother, TM Hunt of TM Hunt Custom Knives is really big into his slingshot. He went through a big phase where he was making them there, and he still does uh, if somebody orders one up. Uh, if you just check him out, tmhuntcustomknives.com or on his Facebook user page, uh, hit him up and talk to him about it. He's, he's pretty into his slingshots, and he's got a son that kind of led him down that rabbit hole and He's been making them ever since, as well as some just badass custom knives. Uh, anyway, check him out. Thanks. So naturally, I went right to TM Hunt's uh, Instagram page and realized that I had seen his work before. I loved it, uh, and I'm following him now. But I'm very interested in the slingshot aspect. And that was interesting because I remember the uh, the slingshot podcast <laughs> or, or the podcast where we talked about slingshots. I was I was like almost taken aback. You know, uh, why are we talking about slingshots on a knife podcast? But uh, there, there is crossover and uh, definitely a great recommendation there from Corey. So thanks. Thanks so much for that. That was, by the way, episode number 115. Again, the knife junkie dot com slash one one five. The knife junkie dot com slash one one five. I got one other email, Jim, I wanted to uh, mention from a gentleman, Matt Leslie. And uh, he was saying he likes the show. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for listening. Uh, but he also said um, he is interested in getting his first XL cold steel knife. Uh, he he saw my article in Knives Illustrated where I posit the question, are cold steel XL folders insane or insanely useful? And, of course, I came down on the insanely useful side. And I guess I convinced Matt Leslie because he asked me what he should get. And uh, I pondered it for a moment. And uh, the answer was pretty easy for me. And I would have to say anything in the Voyager line, the XL Voyager line. That's a great place to start because you have the option of a uh, of a Vaquero blade. That's that beautiful recurve blade or a clip point, you know, a Bowie style blade or a uh, Tanto. And then uh, and then they also have the Chris now, which I wouldn't start with the Chris. I'd start with something a little more utility uh, utility minded. Uh, but uh, they also come in OS 10 a steel now. And OS 10 is a uh, a great upgrade from OS 8. Uh, you might you might feel a, a little bit shy about something with the OS because of of you know how it gets run down over the years. But OS 10 A is supposed to be a great steel, and cold steel is consistently excellent with their heat treats, no matter what they're heat treating. So uh, I would go for the XL Voyager, and if 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 it were mine, 
uh, I would I would get the clip point. That seems to me the most universal. Uh, you might be tempted by the Luzon just due to its um, well, it's frankly its cost. Uh, it's a forty dollar uh, six inch blade, and it is also a clip point. The reason I would not get this uh, the Luzon as my first XL, and I would indeed go towards the Voyager, is that the Luzon does not have the triad lock. The Voyager has the triad triad lock, and if you're if you're only ever going to get one, which you might, this mm. first one might be your last one. Make sure it's one with your, with a triad lock, mm. uh, because it's it is the strongest lock in the business. It's the lock to experience, and the lock on the Luzon, which is uh, less expensive and more kind of accessible, is is a liner lock, which works well, and it's also uh, backed up by a secondary lock. Works great, but it's not the uh, it's not the cold steel. It's not the state of the art for cold steel. So mm-hmm. Voyager line. That's that's long. That's the long way of saying okay. get a Voyager. <laughs> so so how much does the uh, Voyager run manufacturer suggest a retail price? Uh, I'm not sure about MSRP, but at the street street price, street is price about there. <laughs> sixty five bucks. Sixty bucks. Oh, okay, so it's for, not that much big, more that much more expensive. You know what? Check it out yourselves. I might be mistaken. It's been a while since I've gotten a Voyager. So. Uh, but they are they are on the low end of cost for XL cold steels. Hmm. Okay, all right. So there you heard it. Uh, if you have any questions or you want some guidance or whatever, Bob would love to hear from you. So uh, just like uh, this person did, you can shoot him an email at bob at thenifejunkie dot com. Bob at thenifejunkie dot com. Or if you would like, and we would certainly like for you to call our listener line. That way we can uh, share your comment or question with everyone. Uh, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. That way we can, again, as we say, share this, uh, your thoughts and your comments, your questions on the air uh, and let uh, everybody else uh, kind of hear and uh, gain some value from that as well. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast and our Knife Life News segment. And we're going to have uh, Gerber and Cleaver, but it's a Gerber, if I can say it right, a Gerber Cleaver folder. What's what's all that about, Bob? It's a flipper. It's kind of uh, in the tradition of their flat iron, which was their first cleaver folder that they came out with uh, maybe two or three years back. Uh, first in an aluminum version, and then they updated it because it had some serious issues. And uh, came back with a micarta, and uh, they they had a lot of success with that shaped blade. So they came back with this one, and it's called the asada, you know, which is a, a delicious skirt steak dish. And I guess cleaver and meat, they mm. they named it after meat dish. What yeah. a winning combination! <laughs> but it's a pretty cool looking thing. It's got a uh, it's got a much much more of a belly than than the uh, flat iron had, and. Uh, it comes in D2 or 7CR17 MOV, which is apparently an, an upgrade from 8CR13 MOV. I, I just don't get it. I don't get any of those names and number combinations, but hey. <laughs> I know. We need to talk to our good friend, uh, Laren Thomas, again. Uh, but the D2 version comes with micarta handle scales, and the 7CR uh, model comes with aluminum scales. That's kind of uh, in the same uh, tradition as the flat iron, which had a couple of different versions. Hmm. Now, the thing that's interesting to me about this is you got a bit of a point on this, so you can do a lot more puncturing kind of cuts than you could with the flat iron. You got a little bit more belly on this blade, so you have a, you have more EDC value to the knife, I guess I'd say. Uh, And at three inches and with a big old flipper, uh, you know, you, you have a nice, a nice way to deploy it. The thing that is interesting to me is that they have a new, um, way of, well, it's a new innovation for them. And uh, we've seen it in ZT, ZT attempting to overcome the whole lock lock, if you will, locking up a frame lock with pressure from your hand, you know, as you try and open it. So they have a plate, they call it the US assist. And it's a plate that they uh, that they put over, put over the lock bar, so that you cannot uh, depress it and hold in the blade when you're trying to flip it. It also acts as an over travel. You see what I'm talking about there, Jim, that plate? I, I see the picture of it. Yeah, I'm looking at it as you're talking. And by the way, if folks, you want to 
kind of see it and uh, visualize what we're talking about, you can find uh, this story and the other uh, Knife Life News stuff that we talk about in Knife News. So you can go to knifenews.com and uh, kind of see a picture of the Gerber Asada Cleaver folder so you can kind of listen along or watch along as Bob is talking. Right. So so it is a it is a ball bearing pivot. They call it the BOSS, B-O-S-S, uh, set up. Uh, but the, the plate is called the pinch plate. I called it the U.S. assist. I'm sorry. That's, that's one of their other knives. The pinch plate is, uh, is what, is what acts as an over travel, but also, uh, stops you from pinching that, that blade shut. Kind of a, a very nice, uh, simple, uh, um, way to overcome that as opposed to the new 0707 from ZT, which overcomes that through lots of different, uh, well, well, with more engineering, I'll say, with that extra detent. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how these two kind of match up. I mean, uh, Gerber and ZT are in different kind of leagues, if you will, uh, but they both are, are throwing interesting solutions to a problem everyone's experienced. Looking at the pictures, you're talking about it, the green canvas micarta um, mm-hmm. handle scale. I, I keep looking at that and going, I don't, I don't know if I like it. To, it just kind of looks the first word that comes to mind it just looks dirty oh interesting well you say that uh you think the micarta looks dirty that's funny that's kind of one of those things that people myself included kind of like about micarta is that after a while after use it takes on um it takes on some of the oils in your hand it takes on moisture or not doesn't take on moisture but it 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 sort of incorporates the outside world Right. Uh, and the elements into the handle, kind of like the patina on a on a carbon steel blade. Yeah, I mean, I I like that. I mean, I understand that. I like that. I like patina on on different things. And I don't know if that's the right word to describe it. It just when I'm looking at it um, compared to the other picture, a little it, grubby. It, yeah, grubby. That maybe that's a different, better word, or just doesn't pop or something like that. So yeah, yeah, to yeah, each his own. I, no, no, I, I hear you on that. And the word pop, that, that's interesting. This, this knife, um, you know, it's a, it's a stainless steel frame lock, uh, with micarta on one side. The micarta, you know, as you know, I love it looks great, but it also comes in aluminum. And, uh, I think maybe that's their opportunity to, to make it pop. I see what you mean. You know, it, mm. it, it is a slick design. It, it might look cool with yeah. a slick handle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you think about the Gerber Cleaver Flipper? Uh, give us a call on the listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. We'd love to uh, hear your thoughts. Do you disagree with me or Bob or agree with me? <laughs> All right, moving on in Knife Life News, a company we've talked about a little bit in the past, Concept. Yes, yes, yes. Concept, uh, K-A-N-S-E-P-T, um, is the company uh, created out of, born out of uh, Kaiser Knives, if you will. Uh, uh, Kim Ning, a uh, designer there, I, I, I used to have a few knives with his name on it, left Kaiser Knives and started Concept. They recently released two in-house designs that have gotten a lot of press uh, through the knife reviewers on YouTube, but now they're coming out with a collaboration with Mikkel Williamson, uh, the Danish tactical knife designer, and uh, it's called the Hell X kind of a cool name, and it's an S35VN or D2 steel uh, G10-handled behemoth. It is beautiful. It's got a very subtle-looking um, uh, tanto blade, very broad-looking, slicey-looking blade with, with kind of an interesting setup on the G10 handle. It's like layers of G10 uh, for different colorways. So pretty cool-looking knife, and it's cool to see concept knives uh, moving into the tradition of... Uh, collaborations with famous designers like Mikkel Wilmson. Well, the Hell X name sounds like a knife that should be carried by Hellboy. Hellboy, <laughs> oh yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And my, three point movie three reference. Yeah. <laughs> that was just on the other night. Well, I guess it's on all the time. And uh, I always stop by. Uh, the Hell X is a 3.64 inch blade. So that's a, that's a nice size. Uh, still would be pretty puny in, in Hellboy's hands. but Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But a big knife nonetheless. Yeah, I like the black and blue one, and also I like the the major part of the blue handle. I'm not quite sure I like the what is that gold 
the underlying level layer behind it. I, I, I don't like that color combination, so maybe there's uh, ways you can customize your colors. I'm not sure, but uh, I like the, the big blue. I just don't like the puke gr- no, it's not even puke <laughs> green. It's like a puke gold. It's not like not 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 a per- it's a mustard gold. I, I yeah. think that goes with the blue. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the and the one above it looks like it has that mustard gold but with OD green and a black blade. And there it doesn't bother me. But um yeah. That's this, that's, this is- that's my least favorite. Yeah, the gold and the green. Yeah. Well, Jim to each his own. <laughs> That's the beauty. That's the reason they make so many knives and color combinations, because everybody likes different things. So there you go. All right. Civivi, a brand that uh, we kind of constantly talk about. Well, not constantly. We're, we're, we're talking about a lot because they're uh, turning out uh, a bunch of knives. Civivi Mandate is uh, one you want to talk about. We've been talking a lot recently about utility blades, uh, special holders for generic utility blades. Well, Civivi has come out with something very similar. Uh, it's a utility blade knife uh, with replaceable blades, uh, yet the blades themselves are proprietary. So th- this is not a um, utility blade holder that you're going to Home Depot to restock uh, when the blades get dull. Uh, it ships with two blades uh, that are just sort of, um, they're like Kiridashi blades. They're triangular Perfect little EDC style uh, triangular blades, uh, 9CR18 MOV, a steel that Civivi has had great success with in the past. Uh, it comes with two regular blades and then uh, an additional, uh, well, so it's three all together, one and two spares. And then it comes with a single Damascus replacement utility blade for when you're really balling, but you're opening up boxes too. Um, it's got a beautiful, beautiful uh, titanium handle. This is what really drew me in. It's a, it looks like a, a wee knife or a Civivi knife, but it's just this little, little titanium thing, you know, with the, with the typical slide forward, uh, actuation. Well, and, uh, according to Civivi, supposedly uh, available this month, uh, July, they didn't say when. So I don't know if it's July 1st or July 31st, but, uh, you can keep your, keep your eye out for that if you want. Again, as we always say, MSRP uh, around the $98 mark, but again, manufactured suggested retail price. And uh, interesting in the uh, knife news story, Bob, they uh, had a, a, a paragraph about the utility knives, uh, kind of a common side on uh, Kickstarters with a lot of folks uh, doing Kickstarters on these little utility knives. Yeah, yeah. And the little, the little hybrid uh, opener slash uh, pry bar uh, tools. It's pretty interesting. I, I have to say, you know, we've mentioned a few of them on the show that have piqued my interest, but I, this one is just, it's, it's kind of really cool looking. I, yeah. I might need one. So. Oh, absolutely. And with all the shipping you do, sir, I think you need one too. I, I think I do, actually. Yeah, I think I do. And uh, Civivi seems like it's a uh, brand growing in your collection, or at least a lot of interest from you lately in Civivi. Yeah, I, I got the Civivi Shredder. and was incredibly impressed by by the blade grind. Um, and then I've I've recently had this uh, Civivi Rustic Gent in my possession from the Pass Around Group, which I've also been very impressed with. So, uh, yeah, Civivi is uh, you know, Civivi is we, and uh, <laughs> now people are saying like we is more like the upscale brand of Civivi. They just keep pumping out these uh, exceptionally engineered pocket knives. All right, finally up in uh, Knife Life News, we're going to talk about A.G. Russell, and I'm sure this uh, story, Bob, had you at uh, Dagger. <laughs> it did. They, so A.G. Russell, legendary knife company, knife maker, um, he died in 2018, uh, but he left behind this you know, gigantic knife world legacy. Uh, and before his death, they started the Sandbox series, a series of tactical knives um, and outdoor knives, but uh, really meant to be for soldiers. They had a Bowie, or they have a Bowie, the Sandbox Bowie, and there's a drop point uh, kind of hunter style knife. And then this, which is this new dagger that is gorgeous. And it's something that AG himself designed uh, before his passing. And it is a six inch, uh, six inch dagger double grind uh, with a micarta style handle, except I think they call it Ru- Rucarta. But you get the idea. The interesting thing, it's a full tang uh, blade. The interesting thing about this, besides just being a gorgeous uh, dagger, Jim, 
is that it's got this um, different kind of grind at the edge. It starts at a 30 degree inclusive edge for most of the length of it. But when you get to the tip of the blade to, to make it stouter for piercing, you know, that's the big problem with daggers is, you know, you want that super fine piercing point, but you don't want it to break. So a lot of different companies and makers have a solution. The AG Russell solution is it goes from a 30 degree inclusive edge to a 45 degree inclusive edge, about uh, an inch and a half from the tip. And uh, to me, it sounds like a, a really, really great sort of solution. However, it takes very, very skilled sharpeners to be able to do this. So not necessarily an easy thing to accomplish. Well, again, the uh, Sandbox Dagger, the fourth knife in the Sandbox series after the Bowie Utility and Camp Knives, as Bob said, uh, supposedly coming out uh, September, October, sometime around the fall, uh, on available for pre-order now. So, uh, again... All of this story and the other stories that we talk about in Knife Life News this week and most every week, uh, we get our information courtesy of our friends at Knife News, knifenews.com. Be sure to uh, check them out. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, we're back on episode number 125 of the Knife Junkie podcast. And I don't know if this is Bob's favorite part of the show or not, but this is where he gets to talk about his knives during the state of the collection. This is not a new knife, Bob, but uh, a knife that you uh, kind of reconnected with, the Microtech SOCOM Elite. You had a recent uh, quick family trip out of town for a few days, and uh, you were able to uh, to catch up with the uh, Microtech. Tell us all about it. I was uh, well. This is the Microtech SOCOM Elite. Uh, this is from 2012. It's the Tanto grind before they changed it to its current look, and uh, it is one of my absolute all-time favorite Tanto grinds. Period. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife, uh, and I got it for that reason back in 2013 from someone on on Blade Forms. But it's become my road trip knife because it it's one of my very few knives with a glass breaker on it. And of course, I'm the sort of person who, who imagines at some point I'm going to have to break a windshield to get out of an overturned car. And, and that's just how I think. Hopefully that's never the case, but, um, my mind always veers in that direction. Right. My mind wanders like that too, especially when I lay down to bed and can't go to sleep immediately. I start thinking of all these things and it's like, ah, oh, stop, stop that, stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Since I can't sleep, let me conjure up the let darkest me. thing. Possible. Exactly. <laughs> So the SOCOM Elite has a, a glass breaker, as mentioned, and is just a, a great knife to carry, I've learned. So this, this trip we just went on was only, it was three days and two nights, a quick getaway. Um, but I, I, you know, said, I've got, I got to grab the SOCOM Elite. We're going to be driving. We're going to be on the highway. I need the SOCOM. And I decided that's going to be the only knife I take except what? for, well, oh, except for a large okay. knife. <laughs> The only folder. Usually, when I go away on vacation, I take a whole, a whole coterie of uh, folding knives just just in case I'm in one mood. I could grab one knife, or you know, have some you have a, a suitcase for both daughters with clothes, a suitcase for the wife with clothes. You have an overnight bag with one pair of underwear, and then a suitcase of knives. Is that how that, you're saying you pack? That's so. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much how it works. So this time I, I exercised incredible discipline. I'm so proud of myself. And the only thing I brought was the SOCOM Elite. And uh, I love aluminum knives, Jim, aluminum handled knives. I, I, I keep forgetting about them. And then every time I carry them, I love the way they feel. I love the way they wear. And I love the way they slip in and out of the pocket. And uh, this SOCOM Elite is a big four inch bladed knife. And with this, this big aluminum handle, you can put it in swim trunks. You can mm. put it in light gym shorts and carry it around all day and, and barely remember it's there. Uh, of course, uh, I use this for a couple of things, uh, cutting bread. I used it to cut bread. Not the, not the best bread knife, you know, but it'll do the trick if it's all right. you have. And uh, uh, it's great for cutting hot dogs, so incidentally. Uh, but the thing it's really best at is being present. It's a big tactical knife that you can keep on you all the time because of its weight. And uh, it's one of the first ball bearing knives I'm aware of existing. And uh, certainly it was the first one I had. It's a mm -hmm. thumb stud only knife with a gentle nudge. Man, that blade flies out. Right. And uh, when I first got it, I wasn't aware that it had ball bearings in it. I wasn't aware of that whole 
thing, the bearing assisted pivot. Right. And I couldn't figure out how they got it so smooth. Now you know. <laughs> now I know. A <laughs> couple, couple of quirks about this knife, Jim. All proprietary hardware. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to open this thing up, you got to either send it back or, I don't know, fashion a tool or maybe they maybe they sell the tools. Uh, so it's not easy to, to service yourself, but I've never needed to. Right. The other quirk is it's it's one of two knives that I excuse the tip down only configuration. Oh. It's such a great knife. I'm willing to suck it up and take it. Oh, what uh, a guy. <laughs> yeah, what a guy. Uh, that being said, it draws and actuates beautifully. Just the way it's all set up. Uh, when, when you reach into your pocket, your hand, uh, your thumb immediately dips into this little swale that's cut out for it to later uh, pop open the uh, the blade with. So it pull, it draws beautifully, it opens beautifully, and it just it's a great knife. And I'm I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I never got rid of it. And uh, I look forward to wearing it in, man. That the, this hard coat anodizing they put on it takes a while. So subscribe to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. All right, Bob, before we uh, wrap up this podcast this week, I know we've given uh, props and uh, credit to uh, Knife News, also uh, our friends at uh, Knife Magazine. We mention them from time to time, so thanks to them for all their good work, as well as Knives Illustrated. A lot of good uh, content there, and uh, you know, kudos to the, the new editor there, friend of the show, Slicey Dicey, or Brian Ball, a real street name, if you will, but uh, Knives Illustrated. But uh, The Knife Junkie has uh, been published in Knives Illustrated and also have a forthcoming article as well, Bob, you want to talk about? Yeah, that's right. I I did uh, the first article last issue on uh, XL Cold Steel Folders, Uh, insane or insanely useful. This time I I wrote an article for them called Backyard Bushcraft. And basically I'm talking about uh, how me with my limited skills – you know, my limited outdoor skills, I still have uses for knives outdoors and how uh, the roles that those play, the knives and blades play in just keeping um, my home tended to on the outside, that is. And, well, uh, longtime listeners of the podcast will know you love to chop those vines with uh, numerous different knives that you test out in the field, if you will. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is uh, the one real practical, uh, one real practical test that that comes up because I'm constantly, constantly fighting these vines. It's like the great Hydra, Jim, as I say over and over. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, check out, uh, it'll be coming out next month, Backyard Bushcraft article. Uh, I mentioned a couple of my absolute favorite outdoor um, knives for my, my lifestyle. And right. as you know, it's so hardcore. Absolutely. The suburban dad, I think, as you say. So, uh, again, Knives Illustrated, you can find that at knivesillustrated.com. Get your subscription if you don't yet have one. Uh, definitely a lot of good content in there. And uh, weekly newsletters, see that coming out. And I have to kind of just uh, go, oh, I'm not going to look at that too closely because that's a gorgeous looking knife. Oh, that's a gorgeous looking knife. You know, so it's like, I don't know if I need or can afford to go down that rabbit hole either. So, a lot yeah, of, a, lot of, a, lot of pretty, a lot of pretty eye candy there. Yeah, that is for sure. I'd say it's a rabbit hole you go somewhat down. You have to go all the way down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I think uh, what we talked about on the last podcast, I'm about 10 knives down that rabbit hole. So uh, we'll, we'll yeah. see how it goes. And I know you have your eye on a couple more. <laughs> I do. I do. Several of which we've mentioned here on the podcast. Yeah. All right. Well, mentioning podcasts, shows, knives. Hey, that's what we're all about here. But we're also all about that on Thursday Night Knives, the live video show every Thursday night. Um, For the most part, we did have to cancel this past Thursday because, as Bob said, he had a family trip out of town. But, uh, hey, you know, got to have some time away. But most every Thursday night and coming up again this Thursday night, uh, right before the July 4th holiday, it's going to be July 2nd, is our Thursday Night Knives show. And, of course, we want to mention that, again, Our live Thursday night show on the third Thursday of every month, that's when you're going to have a chance to win a knife. If you are a member of the Knife Chunkies Patreon at the $10 a month level, you get a chance to win a free knife. And as we've said before, uh, this first drawing, you might have a little advantage because we're just getting the Patreon going (laughs) and, uh, you know, maybe uh, not have quite as many people to, uh, to compete with at the $10 level. So uh, go to thenifechunky.com slash Patreon and get your uh, Patreon membership. And uh, if you're so inclined, 
do so at the $10 a month level, and uh, you'll have a chance to uh, get in that monthly night drawing. Yep. Yep. And uh, just as we close, I just want to, I just want to thank the people who have signed up first. Where's Chris, Kevin, and Brent Smith? Very, very much appreciated. And to anyone else who super chatted or just listens to the show and likes the show, thank yeah. you so much. It is uh, it is greatly appreciated. I've been getting a lot of correspondence and getting harder and harder to keep up. Right. And that's a good problem to have. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you right. very much. Well, keep that problem going for Bob. Email him at bob at the knifechunky.com or uh, give him a call on the 24-7 recorded listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. Leave us a question, leave us a comment, leave us something that we can play back on an upcoming episode of the podcast. Share your thoughts with everyone listening. So, for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person, thanking you for joining us on episode number 125 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.